When one thinks about prostates, the buzzword that relates to it in the general population is all about prostate cancer. But actually, the most common thing to happen to men in their prostates uh, is benign growth causing bothersome waterwork symptoms. And that will affect some 60% of 60-year-olds. So in actual fact, it's a much more common problem and a much bigger burden in terms of men's quality of life and therefore on their healthcare system. The thrust of all modern surgery has been about being minimally invasive. So that's better for patients in terms of scars, pain, how long they spend in hospital, some of the risks associated with major surgery, and also, of course, how quickly they get back to normal activities. I was involved in the introduction of the green light laser to the UK in 2002. When I was appointed here as a consultant, part of my mandate was to bring that technology here so we could move from prostate surgery that meant an average, in fact, when I arrived at three nights in hospital to the day case setting, so people went home the same day. The company who then owned it, American Medical Systems, decided to fund the trial achieving the data you need to then go forward at a population level, and that's a randomised trial against what's considered the reference procedure, in this case a TURP, and that trial was called Goliath. And that was a pan-European prospective randomised trial, and we were uh, one of a number of centres in the UK. Thanks to the, the setup here in terms of the staff, uh, their enthusiasm being involved in trials, we were the first people to recruit any patients into that trial in Europe, uh, and we were the third biggest recruiter of patients in that trial by the end of it. That was independently monitored, and we were seen to have not only been recruited very well, but we kept very clean data. And I was approached uh, by Neotrack, the company developed the Eurolift implants, about whether I'd then like to be the primary investigator in the UK for another pan-European prospective randomised trial versus the reference procedure, that is the TURP. Eurolift is a breakthrough procedure for patients suffering from a large prostate. So unlike other traditional treatments, it doesn't require cutting, heating or removal of tissue. The Eurolift can be delivered under local anaesthesia or light sedation. Consequently, patients can go home the same day and it can be delivered in the outpatient setting. We went through the process of going through national ethics and getting that all sorted and identifying other sites to be involved in that study. Again, we managed to recruit, and in fact, it was a very difficult study recruiting to because you're trying to persuade men to have either a very minimally invasive procedure or a standard of care that involves two or three days in hospital. And certainly many centres in the UK and around Europe found it very difficult to recruit patients into it. But again, because of our team uh, and the enthusiasm, we recruited very efficiently and we were the second highest recruiters in that study called BPH6. Recruiting patients is always a challenge. Um, I think if you're quite honest with the patients about research um, and providing them the information so they can go away and read it before making any decisions about participating, um, and feeling obviously it is a voluntary role that they are recruiting into, that's the most important. Being available for them before they even sign any informed consent is important so you can answer any questions about being a study patient um, and having that point of contact which I am um, for those patients that should hopefully help them make a decision about whether they want to take part in any research. We are a Neotrack obsessive about great data and that's clearly what we, we see in this partnership here is that Grimley are absolutely dedicated to high quality data. I was then approached by a new company, Procept Biorobotics, who were developing a new technique called aquablation to remove tissue using a high pressure water jet. The early evidence suggesting that this might be a potential game changer because of a lesser risk upon sexual side effects. This was going for a development process. Uh, but they wanted me to be involved again as national primary investigator in a randomised, this time global study, of aquablation versus the reference standard TURP. And in this case, not only is a prospective study, but a double blind study. So we need to have a, a blinded and unblinded surgical team. I would come back to Frimley to, to do more studies again because it's been. Um uh, an easy process to set up studies and to conduct the studies. Uh, the staff have all been very experienced, very helpful. Uh, it's been very easy to communicate with them as well, which is really important in the conduct of clinical trial. The patient recruitment has been very good. We've had a very low screen failure rate. It's exciting for us as a department to be involved in these new procedures with Mr Barber. It adds something different to what we do every day on a daily basis. The outcome for these patients will be a safer, smooth transition when we do get to that point. It has its challenges, but on the, uh, on the whole, they are less invasive. The recovery periods will eventually be shorter for these patients, and I think that's what we need. Essentially, we're 
here at Frimley very interested in wanting to do more research, predominantly for the benefits of our patients, but it's also about encouraging our staff to be more research active as well. And I think over the, particularly the last few years at Frimley, we've worked really hard to develop a research portfolio. In particular in urology, we've done an awful lot of research and that's growing year on year and we'd be very interested in growing our research activity even more. I hope with our history of being involved in a number of randomised trials and non-randomised prospective trials of new innovations, we demonstrate that we have an open mind in terms of what innovation and new technology may offer to our patients. We bind that with a determination to do this in a proper academic way. We recruit patients very well. We maintain their follow-up and gain excellent clean data from them. And I hope that we'll be involved and keen to be involved in all new innovations in this field uh, into the future. And not only be part of the trials, but also if they're successful and would seem to have something to offer to the public healthcare system in the UK and the NHS, that we're part of seeing that implemented into that sector so it becomes real.